Hey everybody. So I thought I would put together a quick little video on what I've been doing with Gretland box cab repowering and just kind of pull together all the different mechanisms I'm playing with right now. Uh, anyone who's ever worked on these kits is probably aware that they come in two flavors. There's original and there's current production. The original version of this kit actually came with a beautiful full hopper gear motor and this transmits power to the axles through a set of one-to-one -one ratio bevel gears sits vertically as you can see here the second version of this kit um, uses a inexpensive Mabuchi three-pole slot car motor and has this uh, gear train here there's a whole gear train unit in there um, and is notorious for running really poorly and sounding like a coffee grinder. This one's also got a weird equalizer thing that they tried to do here that really, uh, it doesn't work. Unfortunately, because they run the gear train between the two wheels on either side, it creates a torque reaction that tends to want to lift the axle in the direction of the torque. So, problematic. Um, but something that we'll talk about, you know, strategies to get around that. So on that note, let's uh, dive in and see what I've been playing with. Okay, so here's a quick overview of all the mechanisms we've got in play. And we'll start over here on the left. So this is the current production Grantline box cab. What we see here is the three-pole Mabuchi motor, which is, uh, as I said previously, it's a basically a slot car motor. This is the Delrin gearbox that comes with the kit. It's a snap-together deal. It's really sloppy. It tends to have binds, a lot of lateral deflection, and it sounds like a coffee grinder. All right, so this is the current chassis. And at low speeds, you can even see the armature stalling. If you look in there, you can also see the wheels wobbling. That actually shows up on these. Uh, just even you know, five, six thousandths of an inch will absolutely show up as this thing's running down the track. But yeah, we definitely got that coffee grinder sound. Here's the wheel set that comes with it. So you'll see there's gears on the ends of the axles here. And these three gears here translate motion between these two. So one axle is driven through this gear here off of this gear in the gearbox and then motion is transmitted through these three gears to the other wheel. The, the one kink in this, and as I, I talked about previously, is that there is a equalizer element here and what happens is when this gear rotates it either wants to push this wheel up or push this wheel down and that basically causes the locomotive to constantly try to three wheel due to the torque response of the gear train. So that's kind of problematic and, and one of the reasons that these run erratically. So some of the things that I'm looking at with this particular chassis uh, are trying to use these Chinese gear motors that you can pick up on eBay really inexpensively. Uh, they're you know five to ten bucks in a wide variety of ratios. So this one I'm actually playing around with a system that's very similar to what was originally done with the old Swiss drive model. So I'm using a Grantline bevel gear drive one to one. And it actually fits under the hood pretty well. Actually, it, it just barely clears. But it does clear. This is going to be an excellent solution to replacing all of this. Um, it's 
It's noisy, but it's a different kind of noisy. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. This is more metallic. This is, this is just like a pencil sharpener. Um, I'm still figuring out what to do with the underframe here. So I was actually able to figure out how to screw, screw the motor in from underneath. And the one thing that you'll notice between this chassis and this chassis is the width of the side plates. And that's because on the later version of this, Grantline doesn't have a narrow gauge version versus a standard gauge version. They just have them all with the standard gauge configuration. I think that was to simplify the kit and production. But obviously, if you want to be accurate, you need to find a way to narrow that down. And so that's that's part of the exploration here to adapt this. So that's basically it for what I'm doing with this kit directly. Some other ideas that I had were using this power unit here. So instead of the motor standing up in the back, like I did with that one, this would actually sit more like this and I could actually put an engine cover on that just like the well basically I could I could replicate the interior of the actual 23 ton GE box cab with this solution so I'm gonna explore that because I, I think that'd be really cool to actually be able to replicate the interior in scale accurately with the right drive system all right, just wanted to zoom in on this really quick and show you some detail of how I put this together. So this is a right angle drive micro gear motor off of eBay. And uh, you just need to figure out what RPMs you need at the wheels because it's the output here is one to one translation. So this is going to define you know, the actual speed of your locomotive. This bevel gear here. So again, this is the part number is for a 330 seconds axle. So this is going to have to be modified very carefully to be a three millimeter bore, which is what the gear motor is. And to do that, you're going to want to get a jeweler's lathe with um, a pot chuck and be very, very careful. Any, any non-concentricity or gear being out of square is going to translate to erratic running. For the axle, it's much easier. 330 seconds is typically what most high quality aftermarket wheel sets are going to be. So if you go to Northwest Short Line, you can get that from them. All right, let's take a look at this one real quick. So right now, whoops. Right now this gearbox is just floating. So that'll locate itself in the chassis. Turn that all the way up. That's what these sound like. But they have unbelievable low speed performance. So we talked about the Swiss motor drive, uh, the, the micro motor fall harbor, and I've got a, a bevel gear on the end of here so you can see that. If we flip these guys over, it's kind of hard to see because it's all black in there. Um, there's a bevel gear on the axle, there's a bevel gear on the motor, and it uses the same gear train as the current model, except that there's no equalizer element between, uh, there's no equalizer element on the front non geared axle. So, you know, the downside is if it goes over rough spots in the track at three wheels, the upside is it's not having a torque reaction to the drivetrain, which is causing it to three wheel all the time anyway. So take your pick. <laughs> now, one of the things that I've been doing with all of these is these axles are terrible. Uh, the wheel sets are wobbly. They're non-concentric. They're never pressed on square. And so typically speaking, I will actually go and get something like some high quality Northwest short line axles and wheel sets and 
will adapt those to fit the frame. In many cases, and what I actually did with this, these are, um, coming from this side here, these are actually dowel pins that I got from McMaster Car, and they're just, you know, they're perfectly straight, and uh, it alleviates a lot of problems right there, you know, just having straight axles to work with. Go back the other way at a higher speed. And there we go. So, what am I doing with these? Well, these kits are now extinct. Uh, you used to be able to get the box cab kit. And then they sold a motorizing kit that contained this motor, uh, a couple pieces of phosphor bronze, and the gears, and, and also the, uh, the metallic wheel sets. So that all came in this little box here. If you see those on eBay, just grab them. Uh, they're so rare. They're getting so hard to find. This motor is out of production now. Full Hopper doesn't make it anymore. However, they're making this tiny little guy. And... Um, I think this is a 15 by 12 and they come in a wide range of ratios. This one is actually a 39 to 1. The next jump up is a 112 to 1 I want to say. But this presents some really interesting possibilities because it's tiny by comparison. You know, if you look at those side by side, it's a lot less motor. And that means uh, I'll be able to squeeze a lot more stuff inside that cab as opposed to having to split electronics and speakers and things between two units like we did over here. So I think this is going to be the future because I can, you know, use the uh, Grantline bevel gear the same exact way that we use it on this, uh, same axle arrangement, and that works out pretty well. All right, well, I guess I've got the camera out. Let's just go ahead and modify this chassis to accept the new motor. So, pin vise, set of wire gauge drill bits, my drill guide, chassis, new motor. And I'll have to dig up some screws to go in there. All right, so number 57 seems to fit relatively well. Let's just go ahead and guide oriented here. All right. Well, we got them started anyway. Go back and drill these guys. Pull this apart, put the screws in it, and see where we ended up. Alright, so just a quick test fire. I don't have all the gears in this, just the rear. So, according to my RPM transmission tire diameter calculator, that should put us at a top speed of about 32 miles an hour. A little fast. I think these guys wanted to go more like 20, but the next uh, micromotor size up, the 112 to 1, was going to have us going like 11 or 12 miles an hour, which is a little too slow. But that works, that works pretty well.
I'd say that's success. Smooth. All right, last but not least, power trucks. So there was a guy, I think out of Australia, somewhere down in Oceania that was doing something called the bull ant drives. And I've seen a number of people adapt them to the box cabs. Basically what they are is a pair of Northwest short line flea gearboxes at the wheels. And then they put a motor with a, a spur gear reduction to drive the shaft between the two. So I don't have one of those built up yet, but that is something I'm going to play with. And I do have the Northwest short line uh, flea drive stuff. All right, so we can zoom in here. Uh, this is taking a look at a now extinct Northwest Shortline flea drive. These came in a bunch of different revisions and variations, but this is definitely another possibility. It could be redone with a much smaller motor to fit the cab better. It doesn't necessarily have to be this, this larger motor, but the way that the flea would go together, so we take this off of here, is that this, uh, this axle shaft would end up basically going in here and you can connect these two guys just like this and build yourself a, a little power truck but it's not necessarily the most compact solution when compared to some of the other things that I'm playing with here. Unfortunately Northwest Shortline doesn't seem to be supporting the flea system anymore which is disappointing. What are you gonna do? Um, but here's an example of what people are doing, and this is actually exactly what we're trying to achieve. So this is from the Toma folks in Japan who make a bunch of tiny little HON30 stuff. If you've never seen their website, go right now, check out Toma models in Japan. Uh, I, I just got these in the mail literally as I was shooting this, and I'm, I'm glad it showed up because it, it's a nice execution. But this would be another option, you know, having a drop-in power truck. It's just a question of what's the most efficient use of space. And I think, you know, really when you start looking at something like this, I don't know that you can get more compact than a drive unit like that. It leaves um, a whole bunch of space under the floor that you could pack with lead weights or electronics. Um, you could make a really good use of the space under the floor here for different things. So that's where I'm kind of leaning toward. All right, well, I think that about sums it up. Hopefully this wasn't too long. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to keep developing a number of these and see where they end up. I think this one is the most interesting because it's, it's really the lowest cost solution, but it's been a little bit of work to try to adapt these frames to take these motors, and I think that that's the... The big hang up with that one in terms of being able to adapt this, uh, I've simply 3D printed a drill guide that's going to pop in here and then I'll be able to drill the two holes for these two mounting screws and that's as much work as I need to do to drop this motor in. So that's a really efficient solution. The, the downside being that's a $100 motor, that's a $5 motor. So, yeah, <laughs> you can kind of see where I'm, I'm dancing back and forth between the two. But I know that that's going to run amazing and be very quiet. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. And uh, like I said, check back with me. I should have a few of these put together, and we'll do some comparison back-to-back -back runs on the test track and see how this goes.